How are y'all? Worm here. I hope you're having an absolutely amazing day. Welcome to my quick teaser trailer breakdown from a lore perspective. So, in essence, I'm just going to be breaking down certain parts of the trailer. The parts I consider important in regards to the lore of the current expansion and the End Warrior expansion that's actually coming up. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Now first I'm just going to quickly bring this up, so Creative Business Unit 3. If you're unfamiliar with this term, it's actually a subsidiary or a wholly owned subsidiary of Square Enix. So Square Enix tends to break up its departments into different divisions and they give those divisions certain responsibilities looking after certain game titles or game series. Creative Business Unit 3 is actually helmed by Naoki Yoshida and they're the MMO division. So what happens is they look after Final Fantasies 11, 14 and they're also developing Final Fantasy 16. So if you ever see this come up, just know that it has to mainly do with the MMOs, but you'll also see it to do with 16. Now I'm just going to quickly mention this, you get this beautiful shot of the moon that comes up. Now, the moon is actually nothing new to us, we've actually seen it multiple times in every expansion. And it primarily revolves around the Asians because they're the only ones with the ability to actually get there. But we've seen Elidibus stand on the surface of the moon so many times, we don't know exactly what its significance is to the Asians and to us for that matter. We just consider it a moon, but I think it has a more important purpose to them. This might actually be something very, like, granted the moon is very old, that's a given. But to the ancient civilization of Asians from Amarot, this might have actually meant something else entirely, or it may have served a different function. We may find out soon though. Now this is by far my favorite scene. You have the scene of the Warrior of Light just walking across the surface of the moon. This camera shot is amazing because it keeps you guessing. So you see this plate armored person and then you don't recognize until you actually see his face, but he's wearing a cloak and then it makes him look like an Asian as he's walking towards the light, which is something really powerful in the mind, particularly for us. And then you have this footstep, which everybody tripped out about, and so am I. A great way to actually show the logo. So let me just pause here real quick. So you get this map of Eorzea, and you get the map of Garlemald and the other lands beyond. You have Thavnir here as well, which we're going to be visiting. And then you have the flames cutting across the entire map. You have Garlemald in flames at the moment. We don't exactly know why, but Garlemald is still in the midst of a civil war between the legions and the other main powers and families. Then the flames just cut across everywhere here. And then we zoom in towards Vilebrand and you go to either upper or outer Lanossia and then Alizé makes her entrance. Now I'm not going to go much into this scene, I mainly just want to bring up this fact right here. So you may already recognize this mob here, it's actually a Void Send and its identity is a Dread Dragon. So you can see a Dread Dragon here, so Dread Dragons are nothing new to the Final Fantasy series, we've been seeing them all over the game ever since the game began in 1.0. So these things are a constant mainstay in the series, but they're a primary powerful Void Send. But the fact that we're seeing a Void Send being fought, and multiple of them at that, makes me think it has something to do with those pesky towers that have been popping up all over the world. Now I'm going to bring up the towers multiple times, and for very good reason. Here's an example of the tower that's either in, I think it's upper or outer Lanossia. It's off the map, so we can't really see it for certain. We don't know which zone it's actually in. Now, we don't know what it's doing. Its architecture is fairly specific, and its architecture actually nods to another civilization, which I'm going to go into further in the trailer. But all we know right now is they're in Lanossia, and they're fighting Void Sand for some apparent reason. And there seems to be a lot of these Dread Dragons around, so it could be actually a large flood of Void Sand. Now here's the part I wanted to focus on. We cut to the scene where you see what we think is Fan Daniel, but I think it more than likely is. But the fact that they're cutting off his face, we already know what Fan Daniel looks like. There's no real reason to do this except just to keep us guessing. But... If you take a look, that's Fan Daniel there, so it does actually look identical to what he actually looks like in the trailer itself. You have the outlines of his cloak and his face, his jawline, everything pretty much matches up. So we can say with absolute certainty, just about, that this is Fan Daniel. Now he's burning something there, we don't know exactly what this is. Now this is the thing setting off people's imaginations. Where the heck are they? People are saying that they're in the Void Arc. 
it would make sense the void arc is actually still active it's floating around a sea of clouds even as we speak nobody's at the helm so it could have been easy enough for somebody to fly there take over the bridge and do whatever you want with the void arc essentially if it's even safe to do considering it's crawling with void scent but again that's the void scent element actually popping up again now i for one actually have a different theory about this and my theory mainly has to do with this so you see Fan Daniel enters this elevator it goes up the spine spine of a something that looks like a tower and then you stop here now if this is a ship it's not moving so my opinion is this is actually not a ship that they're on my opinion is it's a tower so he was actually around here he took the elevator all the way up to around this point here and then whichever place this actual seat is actually sitting and they're overlooking the scene these towers are actually gigantic so this thing's very tall so i think he went up to around here and that's what we're seeing right now when they're actually just coming out these are four spikes as you can see here or four platforms and you actually see these platforms here as well one two three and the fourth one behind so i think that's actually it i don't, i think we're actually seeing a tower now we've never seen towers in relation to Garlemald because we have no footage of Garlemald at this situation. You see this Garlean warship on fire falling down and then you have this scene here with the city in flames. You have a whole bunch going on in the background but you don't see anything striking the city here because all of these things are just fire embers from whatever's burning. I think it's a given that this is actually Garlemald although it's in ruins right now so we can't really tell what it is but here's one of the few images of Garlemald we actually do have. But I think it actually matches it, aside from the fact that we don't see any tall towers other than this one. So we don't see any of the tall structures Garlemald is known for. Although this is only a very small visual aspect of Garlemald city itself. We don't see behind the camera and we don't see the camera panning around to show us the rest of it. So it's entirely possible that we're just looking at a certain part of Garlemald, wherever this tower is actually looking. So my general opinion is from a lore perspective, Xenos and Fan Daniel are sitting in this tower watching Garlemald burn wherever this tower is in relation to the lands in Garlemald. Then we cut to our boy sitting in his chair. He seems pretty indifferent about what's going on, but he generally just doesn't care about anything except hunting the Warrior of Light. So we're just going to give that to him. He'll do a slight little smirk. He's getting ready for his final confrontation with us. Then we cut to this part where the Warrior of Light is on the moon. You have this lovely cape that he's wearing and his armor. Everything about this new paladin look is absolutely amazing. The paladin is the right character to actually show this expansion because it's light versus darkness again. And now we have the light. And the paladin has always been a symbol of light. You have this beautiful show here where he just swings the sword across. He's looking at us. Then it pans out. The moon eclipses the source. Then you have the logo come in, then you have the moon, and then you have this thing. Now, I've looked everywhere, I have no idea what this is. My only theory is it's something to do with the Asians. This could be an ancient Asian design because its design elements don't match Vachi, they don't match the Allegans as far as we can see. I think this, whatever this thing is, it's our method of either getting to the moon or it's part of their plan in terms of bringing about another end days to the source. So as you can see here on the moon as well, just to actually reiterate this fact, the moon has just played a pivotal part, particularly from a Lydipus's standpoint. And they've always been overlooking and just looking at the world itself, just keeping an eye on it. Now we don't know why they just choose to stand on the moon. Why the moon of all things? But it's a, it's a satellite, it's just standing there. So you may as well just stand on it and they have the ability to do so, but why they do it we just don't know and why it's always coming back to the moon we also don't know it's too early to tell and that's it guys that's all i have to say about this trailer going forward now i have to reiterate that this is only a teaser trailer it's just over three minutes long and to be honest it's probably half the length of the trailer that we're going to get now they've done this with every expansion so far they break the trailer into three parts they do a teaser trailer then an extended teaser trailer and then they do a full expansion trailer, which is like six minutes long. They did this with the last fan fest and they're gonna do it with this one again. More than likely we'll get an extended teaser 
with patch 5.5 and then we'll get the full trailer when Digital Fan Fest comes out. Anyway guys, I'm done here. There's nothing else I need to say about this. Um, leave your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to actually hear your personal opinions or if you caught any details I actually didn't see. And subscribe to my videos if you want to see more content like this. Thanks guys. Have a good one.